Now, if you think about any business, there are huge accounting departments, right? There are people that are really are working just on client billing. There are people that are working on just inventory costing. There are people that are just re working on financial reporting or treasury. Like those are like the big type of clients or the big type of companies. And in cannabis, because you know, these companies are strapped for cash because it's still federally illegal. Um, there's so many different reasons that cannabis businesses aren't really, they don't, right now they don't see the value in accounting, even kind of the top of ones that have investment and all that stuff. They see the value, but they're not able to kind of use the value. Um, so that's like one of the main issues. And then uh, they're overwhelmed by all of the different requirements that are happening. So it's, it, it's hard to kind of get the business owner excited. And if you're a business owner, thank you for listening to this, but it's hard to get people excited about accounting. And so, you know, why is cannabis accounting different than any other accounting? Well, it's the most important thing is it's a requirement, right? You know, with the books and records provisions, with the inventory reconciliations, with the inventory counts, with the lack of um, banking and kind of banking structure or payment processing, businesses need to be very, very, very focused on accounting, right? Where other businesses still should be focused on accounting, but there's not as much at stake if they are not prioritizing accounting, right? And so the number one thing is that it has to, with the cannabis industry, accounting is like the number one thing that a business should be focused on, right? And you can break that down into bookkeeping, into financial planning, into tax planning, into budgeting, into financial forecasts. You can break that down into many different things. So that's like one of the number one things. Um, number two, yes, it's federally illegal. We talked about this already in the cannabis section. So federally illegal means limited or no access to banking. It means 280E, which we're going to talk about. So the punitive tax code, it means no capital from the SBA, so uh, Small Business Association or loans. And um, that's hard, right? Like just those three things. So you have to pay punitive taxes. Um, you have no access to getting capital if you need capital. And um, that, and there's no banking. Those are really hard for any business, right? And so that again, makes it much harder for a business to kind of thrive, right? So cash flow is really important for a cannabis business. Then we also have the fact that um, cannabis is regulated by the states, right? So there are state provisions, which we talked about in the previous section, that really tell a cannabis business what they have to do. So they have to do inventory reconciliations. They have to do inventory accounts. We know every business should do that, but a cannabis business must do that. And they also must have, um, they must have books and records provisions. Like that's part of the law. So that's another thing that a cannabis business must have. Um, the other important differentiation between a cannabis business and any other type of business, and this, you might see some parallels between a manufacturing, food manufacturing, or even a cosmetic manufacturing, um, and even agriculture, but it's unit of measure, right? And so what's interesting is that obviously because of seed to sale tracking, so another thing by the regulation that causes cannabis businesses to have different kind of accounting uh, than other businesses is kind of the necessity to track uh, from every movement uh, of cannabis, right? And so when you think about the track and trace and you think about how that works, well, we're talking about many different units of measure. So when you think about um, milliliters, milligrams, pounds, and kilograms, we're talking about different ways to measure things. So the metric system versus the imperial system. Yet cannabis businesses are using both. And so when you think about this one equation, what does one pound of cannabis equal into grams? 453 point something something, that's something something actually really matters when you're costing out things and when you're calculating things, right? And so it's really important to hone in, especially if you're working in extraction, especially if you're really converting kind of pounds to um, grams, what is the consistency that you're using? Because if you have seen uh, the movie Office Space, you know what a penny can do. And so it's very important, uh, and this is why I think cannabis businesses are much different than any other business, is the unit of measure. All right, so those are the overarching areas of why cannabis businesses are different. You know, when you think about just accounting, what it means is that 
accounting needs to be the priority. You need to focus on cash flow. You need to focus on building systems. You need to focus on a really understanding unit of measure, inventory costing. All of these are super critical. Yes, there is IRC 280E. We have a section dedicated to that, but I'm gonna spoil it for you. We'll talk about that spoiling in much more depth in that section, is that it basically says you can't deduct anything besides your costs of goods sold. Right? So really, when you boil it all down, what's that mean? It means that you have to feel very comfortable with inventory, inventory costing, inventory management. Though That's what you have to feel comfortable with. And you have to feel comfortable with managing a budget. Um, that's huge. The last thing that uh, it's important that a cannabis business, uh, why it's different is that the cannabis business has many, many more areas where they're exposed to tax, taxable events than non-cannabis businesses. And so what do I mean by that? I mean, you know, from a cannabis business, cannabis business has the federal tax, IRC 280E. It has a state tax, right? And that state tax can be boiled down into several different things. Perhaps if it's a dispensary, they have to collect a sales tax, but they also might have to collect a cannabis excise tax. They also might be exposed to use tax, right? So those are some just on the retail or kind of on the bigger kind of side. Cultivators are also responsible for paying a cultivation tax in some states. And then locally, the local licensing authority might also impose a tax, right? And so there are so many areas where a cannabis business is, is, is exposed to taxes that impacts so much. So that's another thing um, to also think about. 